Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back. We're doing another preschool story time. Uh, today's story time is going to be a little bit shorter because I'm only doing two books, but they're uh, some of my favorites. They're a couple of classics, and I hope you enjoy them as much as I do. Uh, the first is called If You Give a Pig a Pancake by Laura Numeroff. If you give a pig a pancake, she'll want some syrup to go with it. You'll give her some of your favorite maple syrup. And she'll probably get all sticky. So she'll want to take a bath. And she'll ask you for some bubbles. And when you give her the bubbles, she'll probably ask you for a toy. So you'll have to find your rubber duck. And the duck will remind her of the farm where she was born. And she might feel homesick and want to visit her family. So she'll want you to come too. And she'll look through your closet for a suitcase. Then she'll look under your bed and when she's under the bed, she'll find your old tap shoes. And she'll try them on, and she'll probably need something special to wear with them. And when she's all dressed, she'll ask for some music. You'll play your very best piano piece, and she'll start dancing. Then she'll want you to take her picture. So you'll have to run and go get your camera. And when she sees the picture, she'll ask you to take more. And then she'll want to send one to each of her friends. You'll have to give her some envelopes and stamps. On the way, she'll see the tree in your backyard, and she'll want to build a tree house. So you'll have to get her some wood and a hammer and some nails. And when the tree is finished, she'll want to decorate it. So she'll ask for wallpaper and glue. And when she hangs the wallpaper, she'll get all sticky. And feeling sticky like that will remind her of your favorite maple syrup. And she'll probably ask you for some. And chances are, if she asks you for some syrup, What do you think she's going to want? Yeah, she's going to want a pancake to go with it. That's the end of that story. I got one more. <clears throat> and it is the true story of the three little pigs. As told to John Chiska by a Everybody thinks they know the story of the three little pigs. Or at least they think they do. But I'll let you in on a little secret. Nobody knows the real story. Because nobody has ever heard my side of the story. I'm the wolf. Alexander T. Wolf. But you can call me Al. I don't know how this whole big bad wolf thing got started, but it's all wrong. Uh, maybe it's our diet. Uh, it's not my fault wolves eat cute little animals like bunnies and sheep and pigs. You know, that's just the way we are. If cheeseburgers were cute, folks would probably think you were big and bad too. But 
But like I was saying, this whole big bad wolf thing is all wrong. The real story is about a sneeze and a cup of sugar. This, friends and neighbors, is the real story. Way, way back in Once Upon a Time, I was making a birthday cake for my dear old granny. And I had a terrible sneezing cold. And I ran out of sugar. And so I walked down the street to ask my neighbor for a cup of sugar. Now, this neighbor was a pig. And he wasn't too bright either. You see, he built his whole house out of straw. I, can you believe it? I mean, who in his right mind would build a house of straw? So, of course, the minute I knocked on the door, it fell right in. I mean, the house was made of straw, you know? I, so, well, I didn't, I didn't want to just walk into someone else's house. So I called, little pig, little pig, are you in? And no answer. I was just about to go home with a cup of sugar for my dear old granny's birthday cake. And then my nose started to itch. And I felt a sneeze coming on. Well, you know what I did. I huffed. And I snuffed. And I sneezed a great sneeze. A chew! You know what? That whole darn straw house just simply fell down. And right in the middle of the pile of straw was the first little pig, dead as a doornail. He had been home the whole time. And I mean, you know, it seemed like a shame to leave a perfectly good ham dinner lying there in the straw, so I ate it up. Think of it as a cheeseburger just lying there. Oh, I was feeling a little better, but I still didn't have my cup of sugar. So I went to the next neighbor's house. This neighbor was the first little pig's brother. He was a little smarter, but not much. He built his house out of sticks. I rang the bell in the steakhouse and nobody answered. I called, Mr. Pig, Mr. Pig, are you in? And he yelled, go away, wolf. You can't come in. I'm shaving the hairs on my chinny chin chin. I had just grabbed the doorknob when I felt another sneeze coming on. I huffed and I snuffed and I tried to cover my mouth. But I sneezed the great sneeze, I And you're not gonna believe it. But this guy's house fell down just like his brother's. And when the dust cleared, there was a second little pig, dead as a doornail. Wolf's honor. Now you know food will spoil if you just leave it out in the open. So I did the only thing there was to do. I had dinner again. Think of it as a second helping. Mm, I was getting awfully full, but my cold was feeling a little better. Unfortunately though, I still didn't have the cup of sugar for my dear old granny's birthday cake. So I went to the next house and this guy was the first and second little pig's brother and he must have been the brains of the family because he made his house out of bricks. I knocked on the house. No answer. I called, Mr. Pig? Mr. Pig, are you in? And do you know what that rude little porker answered? He said, Get out of here, wolf! Don't bother me again! Talk about impolite. He 
probably had a whole sack full of sugar, and he wouldn't even give me one little cup for my dear sweet old granny's birthday cake. Jeez, what a pig! I was just about to go home and maybe make a nice birthday card instead of a cake when I felt my cold coming on. I huffed, and I snuffed, and I sneezed once again! And then the third little pig yelled, and your granny can sit on a pin! Y'all. Now, I'm usually a pretty calm fellow. But when somebody talks about my granny like that, I go a little crazy. When the cops drove up, of course, I was trying to break this pig's door. And the whole time I was huffing and puffing and sneezing and making a real scene. I tell you, it was not pretty. And the rest, as they say, is history. The news reporters found out about the two pigs I had for dinner. They figured a sick guy going to borrow a cup of sugar didn't sound very exciting, so they jazzed up the story with all that huff and puff and blow your house down nonsense. And they made me the big bad wolf. That's it. That's the real story. I was afraid. But perhaps you could loan me some sugar? Stay healthy, friends.